Anthem is finally here, and we've plenty of tips to guide you through the game. Some things are helpful things you should know now, others are kind of essential things the game completely fails to explain. For example, combat is entirely built around a combo system that's never once referenced properly. For that reason alone, you should probably watch our Anthem tips and make sure you don't miss out on any of the things the game forgets to tell you. 1. Be careful about salvaging your gear. When you finish an expedition, you'll see a list of all the guns, gear and loot you've collected. Be careful here because you'll see the options are salvage and quit, and in Anthem land, salvage means break into tiny bits for crafting material, not save or rescue like it does everywhere else. So just make sure you don't accidentally break down any higher level gear as it can make quite a bit of difference to your abilities. However, do mince up anything you're not going to use for the crafting materials. 2. The javelins probably aren't what you're expecting. Currently, the Storm, the elemental magic one, is the best all-round option to start with. It's got a strong selection of high damage ranged attacks, an extended hover that also boosts its shields, and no real shortcomings. Similarly, the Interceptor is presented as a glass dagger assassin type, but can unleash devastating combos and melee attacks between enemies in the blink of an eye. Those are your starter options. The all-round Ranger and the tank slash heavy Colossus are actually pretty weak choices to begin with and should maybe be saved for a second or a third unlock. 3. Javelin unlock levels will give you other Javelin choices later. You unlock other Javelins basically by playing the game. You finish the opening mission at level 2 and can unlock any Javelin of your choice. After that, you get a new Javelin unlock at level 8, 16 and 26. Each time you can unlock anything you want. 4. Try for a good mix of Javelins and gear on your team. It's standard practice to not all play the same thing in a co-op game. You want a good mix of classes, guns and gear so you can mix up range, area of damage and so on when you hit the action. Experiment with everything and try to identify any gaps or overlaps in your offensive and defensive capabilities. There's no point in everyone taking their biggest booms into the game and no one bringing a shield. Ideally you want some range and high damage from something like a Storm or a Colossus as well as an Interceptor to get stuck into the middle of the action. 5. Don't panic if Anthem doesn't load when you start an expedition, your party will survive. There's still a few issues with Anthem, mainly with crashes and loading problems likely to persist with ongoing patches. While it is a pain to have to quit the game, if you were playing with other people, you'll be asked if you want to return to the expedition you were previously in when the game reloads. So if your game hangs, you'll have to restart it, but everyone else should stay where they are and you can join them later. 6. Ammo can run out quickly, so choose two good guns. While you can boost your ammo carrying, it's not unusual to suddenly find the chamber dry as you battle mobs for hours. For that reason, it's a good idea to carry two main weapons that you're happy using so you can switch quickly between them when the clips run out. There will be more ammo around, but enemy attacks can be pretty savage with some tough to kill, high damage things to deal with. So having a pile of ammo in open ground isn't always a great help and having to switch to a sniper rifle in a mob fight isn't great. 7. Call your javelin in flight by nosediving and flying through rain and waterfalls. It doesn't take too long for your javelin to overheat while you're flying through the sky, but if you dive or skim the tops of rivers and plummet down alongside waterfalls, you'll cool down. If you get it right, your heat meter will pause and turn blue, letting you glide without consequence as long as you remain near water or diving. The buff will also last a few seconds when you pull away, so it's worth doing if you've got a lot of ground to cover. 8. Play Anthem on hard for better rewards, apart from the strongholds. In free play and most missions, a four player team will make light work of just about any threat. Because of that, try playing the game on harder levels to get better loot. The strongholds however are basically end game and will always be a challenge, so stick to normal for those. Oh, what? Don't worry too much about Anthem crafting until you boost your Arcanist rep. While you can craft new weapons, abilities and stat boosting consumables, there's not really a great deal of point right at the start of the game. Most of the time when you start, you'll be crafting things a level or two below what you can find while playing. However, you can unlock new blueprints by increasing your Arcanist reputation that will eventually make it more worthwhile. 
You can boost this Arcanist rep by doing the Scar Foothold event and Strider Distress Beacon events in missions, collecting green runes, notes and treasure chests, completing Matthias missions, and talking to the following people. Prospero, what I wanted to hear. Garrod the Chronicler, Sev, Neeson and Serena. 10. Here's how Anthem's combo system works. The Anthem combo system is a really useful way to inflict more damage on enemies and it's sort of incredible that the game barely mentions one of its main mechanics. Effectively there are primer weapons which are marked with a circle icon and detonators which are indicated by a four pointed star. To combo an attack you need to prime it by attacking with a primer weapon or ability, then follow up with a detonator attack or ability, which could also be a melee blow. When you do this the word combo will appear and you'll inflict way more damage. A good combo can one shot entire mobs. Each javelin also has a bonus effect when it detonates a combo. For a storm, combo detonation spreads the elemental status of the primer to nearby enemies. For the interceptor, combo detonation gives the interceptor an elemental aura from the detonating ability that can spread to nearby enemies. Colossus combo detonation deals bonus damage to the nearby area while Ranger combo detonation deals bonus damage to a single target. Eleven, play in squads for extra XP. You might be tempted to play alone and that's fine, however playing in a public game and being assigned a squad will net you extra XP. The more people you play with the more bonus XP you get, so if you want to level up faster and your friends aren't online then just suck it up and play with randoms. 12. Use class specific components when you can. Components are buffs that you can craft and find in the world and can equip for a boost when you head out on a mission. For the most part they're okay, adding a little extra stat here and there, however there are class specific components that have a much bigger boost so always use them if you can. For example a Colossus specific structural reinforcement component will give a 400% boost compared to the smaller reinforcement of a generic armor component. Ready, Let's go! You are freelancers. 